Welcome to the Spinster Life Podcast. This is my new show. It's me talking to a camera, talking to a microphone, all by myself. No guests, no co-hosts, just me. What is this, you might be asking? So it's a YouTube video in a podcast form or a podcast in YouTube video form, depending on where you're listening or watching from. This is a show about some of the things I've seen this week and what I'm thinking about those things. I wanted to call the show I Like to Watch, but there's already a fabulous show of the exact same name here on YouTube. I'll link it below if you don't watch it so you can start watching it. So instead, I'm going to call this show Up in the Air, Spinning Yarns, Spinning Out of Control, uh, something with Thorn back in the title. Let me know if you have any thoughts. And it's a critique of some of the pieces of media I've seen this week. I consume a lot of media, maybe too much, probably too much, but this series will give you a glimpse into my brain. So buckle up, buttercups. Let's start with this YouTube video from The Financial Diet about Instagram face. What is Instagram face? You know Instagram face. The duck lips, the cheekbones, that kind of uncanny valley where everybody looks pretty much exactly the same, even people who are not related to each other. So this video really gets into beauty standards and the way women contort themselves into looking a certain way, even though... It's not realistic to look like that, at least not naturally. The host Chelsea Fagan explains how non-surgical cosmetic treatments like Botox and fillers are changing the way people look, and then the damage that this image of a pouty-lipped, high cheekbone face causes when it burrows its way into your brain and distorts your perception of beauty. On the episode of the podcast with author Haley Shapley, we discuss how beauty standards change quickly. About every 10 years, beauty standards shift dramatically. Let's take butts for an example. Here's a clip from the episode. 10 years ago, the most common Google search related to butts was how to make your smaller. And today it's how to make it bigger. And you know, this is over a period of, of just a decade. So one thing I, I want to be really careful about is not adding another bar for women to cross in terms of now you have to have a certain amount of muscle mass in addition to being lean and perfectly proportioned and all of that in order to be considered attractive. But I do hope to expand our idea of what a woman's body can look like instead of having such narrow constraints uh, around what we should be. And like you said, it's constantly changing and no one can keep up with that. You can't change your bone structure and you shouldn't shift your body composition in reaction to what everyone else looks like. Right. Absolutely. Like, and I, I think it's, you know, it's sort of nice in a way that big butts are in now because people who naturally had that body type for so long were criticized for that. But at the same yeah. time, there are a lot of women who don't naturally have big butts. If you don't sort of like naturally already have that shape to you. And so expecting all women to fit into that extreme at, is as difficult as expecting all women to be rail thin, because that is also something that's very difficult to achieve if you don't already naturally have that shape. So yeah, you, you can't in a lifetime, you will never hit all of the trends. And I wouldn't advise chasing them because it is a no. losing battle. No. And it is a, a bit messed up that we have trends for bodies. Yeah. Bodies are what they are. They are a vessel that allows you to do things that you love, that allows you to experience life. Like they're not a fashion statement. Right. I, I think that it is great that we've shifted to embracing this one sort of beauty standard that we didn't have for so long. But kind of at the expense of everything else. Like it's, you can't spot tone and you can't like right. sculpt this big butt in this tiny waist. If you're not already working with that, you can't just make that happen without a lot of effort and possibly damage to yourself. Maybe plastic surgery that's very expensive and is very hard to recover from all at the expense of, uh, of, of fashion. While I'm glad beauty standards are a bit more inclusive of skin tone and body type, they are still wildly unachievable for most people. We all just, you know, we look the way that we do. Makeup and clothes and hairstyles can help us transform. But apart from major surgery, we all, you know, we look the way we do. The current standard of having a tiny little waist and a round thing in your face. The big lips, the huge eyes, the fluttery eyelashes. I, I don't know about you, but the only way I get a bigger butt is by getting bigger everywhere else. 
So now, getting shit injected into our faces is just one more expectation that women are expected to live up to. Unless we call out how weird it is and we show up as our flawed selves all over the place, social media or our lives, you know, wherever people show up. Make normal normal again. Let's shift to this podcast episode from You Must Remember This, which took me on a wild tangent because I don't really want to talk about the episode itself. The current season is all about sex in movies, and it really gets into the way that women are depicted on screen as sex objects. You should check the whole thing out, but I don't want to talk about the episode because what I really want to talk about is something that was mentioned briefly, uh, an old Newsweek article from 1986 called Too Late for Prince Charming that proved with science that a woman over 40 was more likely to be killed in a terrorist attack than to get married. Here's a clip from Sleepless in Seattle. There are a lot of desperate women out there looking for love. Especially over a certain age. You know it's easier to be killed by a terrorist than mm -hmm. it is to get married over the age of 40. That is not true. That statistic is not true. That's right. It's not true. But it feels true. So this article was mentioned briefly in the episode as a way to show why Glenn Close's career woman character in Fatal Attraction would try to hold on to a mediocre man so tightly. Because the character is 37, you see. She only has a few years left before she becomes unmarriable. Because she's old, you see. But this article was simply not true. The research cited in the article used the following logic. So they were studying the baby boomers. During the baby boom, which is the years between 1946 and 1964, each year of the baby boom, the number of babies born increased. So here's where they start to make some dumb leaps. So in their logic, women will only marry a man that is two years older than they are. So a woman born in 1955 will be looking for a man born in 1953. However, there won't be as many men born in 1953 as women in 1955 because there were fewer babies born overall. So there is more competition and less available marrying stock for women born in 1955. What the what? This is at best a math problem, like a train departs from Cincinnati at 12 p.m. and then, and then oranges. But the statistics don't really bear any of what they say in the article out because it's not true. And in fact, Newsweek printed an apology in 2006, 20 years after the original article came out. And I don't think we can calculate the damage that the article did. How many women entered into relationships with people they didn't like in order to not be single because the magazine told them that if they didn't do it when they were in their 20s, they just would never get married. We can never know, but a lot of the stigma that we're combating here in the single lady space has got to be a result of the article. This article was a backlash to feminism. It was meant to make women freak out about their spinsterhood and their age and to get them to stop being so independent and to be good little women and get back in the kitchen. This article is the whole reason that I started The Spinster Life, to not only call bullshit on this devaluing of women based on their age, but to push back against the myth that marriage is the only thing a woman should aspire to. So that's what I watched this week. Thanks so much for joining me. And if you like this video slash podcast, like and subscribe on whatever platform you're on. You can also follow me on Instagram at Living the Spinster Life, or you can sign up for the Spinster Life newsletter and get all of the new Spinster news in your inbox. I'll see you next time.